this episode of Travelog, we venture to Lijiang, an ancient land located in Yunnan province. Discover the beauty of local Nasi minority group and venture out with us to the mysterious Yulong Mountain and Yunshanping grasslands. Come along on our adventure and feel the power and magnificence of its famous snow-capped mountains. A journey to where nature is at her most magnificent and forbidding. To mysterious places where dazzling and diverse cultures flourish. Where China's numerous ethnic groups draw you into a world of color and vibrancy. Where distinct lifestyles, traditions and crafts have survived the test of time. Join Travelog on its 17-part Ethnic Odyssey, visiting more than 100 places across China. Ethnic Odyssey, an enlightened look at China's rich ethnic heritage. of China's landscape, diversity of its people. Welcome to Travelog. This is Minority Series, and welcome to the Jade Dragon Snow Mountain. Here is perfect example for the human and nature combination. Besides the marvelous sceneries, there are also beautiful minority groups such as Nazi group living around these sceneries. Lijiang nestles the foot of Yulong Snow Mountain in the northwestern part of Yunnan province. For the past a thousand years, it has been one of the most famous towns in all of China. In ancient times, it was settled by nomadic tribes people. In 1253, the great Mongol leader Kublai Khan established a garrison in Lijiang from where he headed further south to conquer the state of Dali. Today, some 180,000 Nashi people are living in the county of Lijiang. They account for almost 60% of the county's total population of 325,000. Of the rest, the majority are ethnic Han, Bai, Zhu, Pumi, and Tibetan. All in all, 12 ethnic groups call Lijiang home. Minority that's non Han people constitute 83% of the total population. Shan Stone Village is located in the north of Lijiang, some 110 kilometers from the ancient town itself. The Stone Village actually stands on a huge rock beside a river called Jinsha at an altitude ranging from 1600 to 4600 meters. The village is home to around a hundred Nazi families who live surrounded by mountains and cliffs. There is only one way into the village from the mountain path, and at the far side, a stone gate shows the way to the Jinsha River. From a distance, the stone village looks like a well-cultivated bonsai tree resting in a ceramic pot. As I get closer, I find the residents are friendly, 
but there's no distinguishing the strong sense they feel of being independent from the rest of the world. Never been a little town like that. I'm gonna sit down with a very good town. It's only have 108 families living here. People all recognize me. There's no strangers here. I'm the only one staying here. So everybody a little shy of a camera. This is the first time in this town to see the camera. Actually, without a camera, everybody very relaxed. They're willing to talk to you, invite you to their homes. It's quite relaxing. But right now, they don't like it. Seems like they're more interested than I do. You know, they remind me one thing. When we leave somewhere, we kind of ignore the surroundings. Even living in the beautiful places like this, ignore that. I want to take a picture, show them. As I make my way further into town, a gentleman waves to me. It turns out he wants to show me some of his artwork. He explains that when he's not doing his farming work, he spends his time making carved wooden figures. Local artist. It's the local houses, local buildings, the little village. They call that was so they call that the like handshake house style. What that mean is somebody neighbor and they're so close to each other, you can't even shake hands. They can touch neighbor's roof and can see people walk around here. Very close. <laughs> The stone village is not a castle built of stone, but a town built on a gigantic rock. Their houses are not the only examples of the locals making effective use of the plentiful supplies of rock and stone. Some people use rock to make the columns that support their houses. Some make desks and tables from rocks and some manage to fashion everyday items such as water bouts, kitchen implements, and even beds from rock. The constant use ensures that all the rocks and stones are polished smooth. All the buildings in the stone village are made by hand and moved in piece by piece by hand. All the rocks and stones they use, they have to carry it on their own backs. Just sometimes they may get a horse to help. The town of Suhe was built on the mountainside and faces a river. In fact, two rivers pass on each side of, or more accurately, through the village. The villagers have built canals that carry water past each house. The rivers, canals, and roads form a network that has turned the town into something resembling a honeycomb. The walls of the houses here are built of stone, fetched from the nearby mountains. In Nazi minority group, water is a source of life. It's very important to them. Therefore, they will choose a place living by the water or they track the water to their villages. For example, they have a special design here. The water comes down the design of three sections and also have a gravity go down one way. The first one will wash or drink. The second one to clean their food. A third one to wash the rest of the things. So this is their typical design right here.
Compared to ancient Lijiang, there's something even more natural about the houses here. In the middle of Suhe, there's a square with a market called Suhe Square Market. It's very relaxing just to gaze at the romantic scenery and the tourists passing by. The Nazi women living in Lijiang are easy to spot because of the way they dress. Blue, white, and black are their favorite colors. Typically, their costume consists of a loose, white-sleeved gown with a white coat on top, trousers, a pleated apron, and a pair of embroidered shoes shaped like boats. The collar sleeves and the front of their clothes are embroidered with flowers. Often, they also wear a sheepskin stole with seven round patterns embroidered on it, representing seven stars that symbolize the remarkable talent and hardworking spirit of Nazi woman. If you take a stroll through Suhe, you get a sense of an ancient town that is quite well developed. There is a fascinating mix of Nazi culture and tradition. With such signs of modern society as internet cafes and coffee shops and bars. Visitors to ancient Suhe have three pleasant ways to pass the time. Getting online, chatting, and doing nothing more taxing than read a book. The ancient town of Dayan in Lijiang has a history of over 800 years. A well-known saying, each house is built by a stream and surrounded by willows, refers to Dayan. More precisely, the town is sometimes called Suzhou on the Plateau. Lijiang's importance as a stop on the tea and horse trail is optimized by the tiny town of Dayan. Caravans passing along the route will stop in Dayan to rest and replenish their supplies before continuing their long and weary journey. Some travelers would linger. The Tibetan merchants in particular would find it hard to tear themselves away from pleasant climates and the colorful Nazi folk customs and culture. The locals did a good business from the passing traders who came through the town in steady numbers. They built many hotels and its market and started to a flourish tourist industry. These merchants oriented hotels can still be found today in Dayan. Very good. Spend like a 10 quad, 20 quad, you can get a plaque with a ring. And then you can make your wish. It's a wish plaque, what they call it. So all those are people buying this, saying, let me uh, check a couple of them. This is it. Dear, I love you. You're my baby. And here he is. My uncle, I love you. My parents, I love you. All these wishes all here. Wish you all the best. Oh, this one. Wish you watching travel log every day. We love travel log host. Ray is the best. No, just kidding. This is all the wish.
quack. People come here, the tourists, make a wish. You spend 10 quack, 20 quack. That's it. That's very, it's like hundreds of thousands of uh, Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. In fact, the ancient town of Lijiang developed from a large Nazi settlement established in Dayan during the Southern Song Dynasty some eight centuries ago. In December 1986, the State Council designated Lijiang as a national level site of historical and cultural importance. This is how people are living here. It's very interesting. This is how people live here, how they clean the house. You know, the water, the river around the town. There are many bridges. I was told there are 365 bridges. They call that one day, one bridge. And the water underneath. So everybody just used the water. This is a river, actually. Around the town, they use a the river just clean the house like that. I was told a long time ago. And everybody, they just open that uh, door. All the water come down. This very clean environment. So, I'm going to do some work. <laughs> the town of Lijiang, screened by a mountain and facing a river, has never needed high walls. It is crisscrossed by ancient streets and lanes paved with colored stones and lined with houses built of wood, stone, and mud. The style is simple and practical, yet nonetheless attractive. Small streams run parallel with Sifeng Street, which cuts across the middle of the town, and many other lanes. The Dongba script used by the Nazi people has some 1,700 written characters. Believe it or not, the pictograph is still alive and well in Lijiang today. We've been talking about the language. We're talking about this, you know, Dongba culture, language, and characters on the, you know, jewelries, on the door, all the decorations. But this, today, first time I see this gentleman to write it down. This is the how to write it. I mean, lots of people tell me Chinese character is hard. Right, this one, very hard. Okay. Look at this. This is uh, once again. Let me translate. They need to translate. This is my name. And this is I wish. And this is my friend's name. And I wish him happy every day. As you might know, music is a major, major element in all ethnic groups in China. However, modern music you can find everywhere. For example, even in this Asian town, there's little bars all over. For example, here, I can find even Bob Marty. Reggae music is popular here. But if you really want to listen to ethnic group music, like a local, local, traditional, 400 years ago, I'll show you where to find it. Dongba music, sometimes called Nashi Asian music, comes in two principal forms. First, there is the An Hun Chu, which dates back over 700 years, but is rarely performed today. Then there is the Li Jiang Dong Jin music, which has its origins somewhat later in the Ming and Qing dynasties. Whatever its form, Dongba music closely reflects Nazi culture, not least in its Taoism theme.
some 15 kilometers north of the town of Lijiang, is a magnificent snow-capped mountain, extending for 35 kilometers from north to south. As you climb up the mountain, you become acutely aware of the marked changes in the environment and temperature, a product of the mountain's temperature glacial climate. Here, among the dangerous hills and rivers of Hangduan Mountain, in the wild lands and forests on the roof of the world, a mysterious ancient road winds and wanders. It's probably one of the most terrifying roads on the planet. For over a thousand years, caravans travel quietly along it. You can still see holes in the stone, some as much as 70 centimeters deep, made by restless horses stamping their hooves. It seems there numerous stories to be told about this ancient path. The piles of stones by the roadsides are many altars, carved with religious scriptures and symbols. This. It's the Asian Tea and Horse Trail, one of the highest, most precarious, and oldest roads anywhere in the world, and a major conduit for the cultural and economic exchange. Yunshanping is a large patch of pasture, tucked away hidden amongst a virgin spruce forest, on the eastern side of the Yulong Snow Mountain. Throughout the ages, the grassland has been seen as the gateway to a mysterious kingdom and a holy land for young lovers. With the development of civilization, fewer people are forced to marry, and this is no longer the spot it once was, where lovers came to be together at all cost. Instead, this place has been turned into a stage where young people from different minority groups perform folk dance and sing there. Folk songs to welcome visitors. Yunshanping has a small cable card providing access to the grassland area as well. Lijiang today is no longer the forgotten kingdom it once was. The Lijiang people are by nature warm-hearted and hospitable. And whatever their ethnic origin, they offer a warm welcome to friends from both home and abroad. And rather like the Lijiang people, the magnificent and mysterious Yulong or Jade Dragon Snow Mountain is also opening its arms to the world. Lijiang is an ancient and mysterious land. It's a land that no one can fail to admire. Nature, the great creator, was particularly kind to this ancient land. It's a home of multi-minority groups in China. <laughs> 